Hi, my name is Brenda Sam. My claim is that animal testing should not be allowed. My secondary claims are that animal testing is cruel and unusual punishment, animal testing is not accurate, and there are many alternatives. Now you may think it's weird to use the term cruel and unusual punishment in regards to animal testing, but there is only one law governing animals in laboratories in the United States and it is under the Animal Welfare Act. This law is under the jurisdiction of the United States Department of Agriculture and it allows animals to be burned, shocked, poisoned, isolated, starved, restrained, addicted to drugs, and brain damaged. Even with these very minimal protections, cold-blooded animals are exempt, which would include but are not limited to, limited to mice, birds, and rats. Cold-blooded animals make up 95% of animals in laboratories. These animals are being tortured to the point of death. That sounds like cruel and unusual punishment to me, except these animals did nothing to deserve this treatment. Animals are conscious and have feelings, something that is common sense to pet owners and scientists alike. One advocate who believes animals are mistreated and our experimentation is reprehensible would be the award-winning scientist Mark Beckoff. In his book, The Emotional Lives of Animals, Beckoff utilizes years of studying a wide range of both domestic and wild animals to illustrate many stories of the joy, empathy, grief, embarrassment, anger, and love they experience. Being the intelligent creatures they are, they should not be treated in such an inhumane manner. My second claim, as mentioned earlier, is that animal testing is not accurate. According to PETA, also known as People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, most animal experiments are not relevant to human health, they do not contribute meaningfully to medical advances, and many are undertaken simply out of curiosity and do not even pretend to hold promise for curing illnesses. The Food and Drug Administration has noted that 92% of all drugs that are shown to be safe and effective in animal tests fail in human trials because they don't work or are dangerous. The truth in animal testing is most of the chemicals and conditions tested on them in laboratories are obviously artificial and never occur in nature. They are being pulled away from their natural habitat, and with all these factors, the results are never true to how humans can react. My last claim is that there are many alternatives to animal testing. One scientist stated, there are non-animal tests that are really valuable, informative, cheaper, and quicker. This scientist's name is Jennifer Sass, and she represents the Natural Resources Defense Council, which is a nonprofit international environmental advocacy group. Let's take, for example, the phototoxicity test. In this test, animals are shaved, then put in restraints while different concentrations of a test chemical is placed on their bare skin and they're exposed to ultraviolet radi radiation for two or more hours. The chemical is removed, then they are left in restraints to be observed for the next few days with no painkillers. It commonly yields sunburn, rashes, swelling, and in inflammation. There's no standard standardized test guideline and they have never been proven to relate to human reactions. The non-animal test for phototoxicity is the 3T3 neutral red uptake test and it is an internationally recognized guideline used in Europe. The 3T3 cells are exposed to a test chemical with and without light. They measure the reduction of cells and how much color is absorbed from the red dye to decide how toxic a, a chemical is. The 3T3 neutral red uptake test is accepted by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Food and Drug Administration, and the Na National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, according to PETA. Yet, animal testing for phototoxicity is still ongoing. If they can approve any non-animal tests in lieu of animal testing, despite the fact that other countries already utilize these tests, 
there's always the option to not use an ingredient which needs to be tested on animals. The Royal Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals cites that there are already more than 20,000 chemical ingredients available to producers of cosmetics products that are considered to be safe. So there's no excuse for any more animals to suffer. Okay, the proposition's identified, but it's a claim of policy, so you have a little bit of a problem there. Uh, you do have a preview of what the supporting structure is going to be. The first supporting point is a claim of value, so I think there's also a little bit of a problem there. Um, the argument about uh, it being cruel to the animals, uh, the description of the tests that you uh, have are, you know, you know, attempts to in indicate what the problem is, uh, you know, what the tests are like, and um, you know, the standard of what constitutes cruel, I think, is going to uh, be very dependent upon um, what, the, what the material is used for. So, for example, in the last part of your last argument, you make a reference to research that's done for um, materials that are used for cosmetics, and I think people would say, well, that is unnecessary, so that I might see as being cruel in some way. On the other hand, some of the other things that you talk about have to do with drug treatments, or they might have to do with, you didn't mention uh, any um, medical procedures, and I think a lot of people would say, well, that's necessary as opposed to cruel, so there's a little bit of uh, difference of opinion on that and I think that uh, because you've got this argument there that it's going to be a distraction for other arguments. The second argument I think is probably the clearest claim of fact that you have on the argument. The third one that works also uh, arguing that uh, there are that uh, the research that we do on animals does not give us accurate results and that there are effective alternatives to animals. I think those are the ways that you want to go. I'd be very careful about citing PETA who's generally perceived as being an extremist group uh, so there are probably other sources that have the same information. PETA probably is quoting some other research uh, rather than original research on their own and I think that that would be uh, better to go to uh, for these arguments. I thought you did a pretty good job speaking to the audience and presenting your argument effectively in the time that you had. Thank you.